Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem bond 04. This one is going to test your knowledge of straight line amortization of bond discounts. Let's take a look. All right, on January 1st, Flyer Court issued $200,000 worth of 8% 10-year bonds at 95. Record Flyer Court's December 31, so one year later, journal entry 4, the first interest payment and straight line amortization of the discount. And in addition to the journal entry, try to describe how that amortization will affect Flyer Corps borrowing costs on the income statement and bond presentation on the balance sheet. Let's take a moment, pause the video, try this out for yourself, and when you're ready, come on back. I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. Um, we're recording journal entries at, at 1231, and for illustration purposes, I'm actually going to record this as two separate journal entries first, and then I'll combine them together, okay? So first thing I'm gonna deal with is the interest. So what I have labeled here is number one. We have a $200,000 bond that is paying 8% interest. So we're gonna have 200,000 times 8%, pull out my calculator for that one, 200,000 times 0.08, works out to 16,000 in interest per year. So 16,000 interest per year. All right, this is an annual journal entry that we're doing here. We started on January 1st, it's now December 31st. And so we have incurred interest expense of 16,000 because of the year that has just gone by. And it does say that we are making the first payment. So that means cash is going out 16,000. Had we simply accrued instead of paying cash, we would have put interest payable here and then paid that payable off later. All right, so that's the interest portion of this journal entry. Now we have to deal with the discount amortization portion. And so first thing we need to do is figure out, well, what exactly was the discount in this situation? For that, we're going to have to do a little bit more math. We had a $200,000 bond. It was quoted at 95. So that means we only received 95% of the face value. So in this case, 200000 times 0.95 works out to 190,000. So that's the cash received. The difference between face value and cash received represents in this case a $10,000 discount. Now, when we do straight line amortization, we get rid of that discount equally over time. This bond is gonna last 10 years, which means divide that discount by 10 years, and we are going to get rid of it at a rate of 1,000 per year is our amortization. Now, how exactly do we amortize the discount? How do we get rid of it? Well, that requires us to have a good understanding of what did that discount look like when we first issued the bond. And so when we first issued this bond, we received cash of 190,000. We recorded a bond payable for 200,000, and we recorded the discount for 10,000. And notice that discount is a debit. It's on the opposite side of the journal entry from the bond payable because it's a reduction in the value of the bond payable. And so since it has a debit balance upon issuance, to get rid of it, we are going to have to credit it. And so the other part of our journal entry, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this just to make us some room. The other part of our journal entry, 1231, credit discount on bond payable for our $1,000, our, our, our annual amortization that we calculated. And the other side of this is we are actually going to record additional interest expense. Now, the reason we're recording additional cost is because think about this. We have promised to pay investors $200,000 on borrowings of only one hundred ninety. dollars we are gonna to have to pay back 10,000 more than we borrowed. That's a cost to us. And so by amortizing that $10,000 over the life of the bond, we are gonna rack up 10,000 in interest expense to reflect that cost. Now, typically you're gonna merge these journal entries. They're not gonna be two separate entries. And so what's gonna happen here is this interest expense is actually going to add on to the 16,000 we would have otherwise recorded. So now that's 17,000. And then this discount on bonds payable is just going to be 
another credit in that entry. So there's the combined entry if we don't do it separately. Okay. Moving on to the second piece of this problem. Describe how the amortization affects the borrowing cost on the income statement and the bond presentation on the balance sheet. Let's start with the income statement because we've already begun this conversation. Remember, our income statement was going to show an interest expense of $16,000 absent the amortization. Now our income statement is going to show an, uh, an interest expense of $17,000. So our expense on our income statement is actually higher as a result of this, which makes sense since the discount is, in essence, a cost to us where we have to pay back more than investors gave us up front. From the balance sheet perspective, bonds are typically listed at their book value or their carrying amount. Those are the same, same phrases that represent the same, different phrases that represent the same thing, sorry. So you're gonna have bond payable, less discount, gives us our book value or our carrying value of that bond. So the bond payable here, as we know, is a $200,000 bond. The discount, as we calculated, was a $10,000 discount, which gave us a book value of 190 to start with. Now that we have amortized $1,000 of that discount, this discount's gonna go down, $9,000. And as a result, notice our book value is gonna go up. Now this is different than a premium. With a premium, the premium goes down, the book value goes down. With a discount, the discount goes down, the book value goes up. But this is exactly right because the goal is we took a thousand off this year and we're going to take a thousand off next year and a thousand off the next year and a thousand off the next year for the full 10 years of the bond until that discount is zero. And every one of those years, this book value is going to go up, right? Until that book value is 200,000 matching face value. And at that point, you've hit maturity day. And at that point, you pay your bond payable back. And that's all there is to it. All righty. So this one's tough. Discount amortization, premium amortization. They're both hard topics. Hopefully you found this helpful. And I hope you join me for another video.